there is lot of uh, content on the uh, science behind ivf on various social media platforms like facebook google youtube and all but today i am going to dive deeper into the biology of uh, uh, the science in, involved in ivf in a very simple and basic manner so hey hi i am dr indu from samrut fertility and urology center and today i'll dive deeper into this aspect of uh, what is the science behind ivf you have taken the necessary actions uh, before beginning your ivf for treatment you have done all the uh, you know important needed uh, corrections whether it is medical emotional physical and then you start the ivf treatment now what happens as i said in the beginning that uh, a conception happens after egg and sperm is fertilized in the fallopian tube in the here in the body right in ivf what is happening is what happens in the fallopian tube is actually done in the ivf laboratory so what do you need when you go through an ivf treatment uh, uh, a lab is going to need your egg and the husband's sperm and that is going to get fertilized in the laboratory and that will be grown in the incubator for 5 days to make it into blastocyst so to achieve this you need a woman needs to go ahead with the stimulation process now this begins on second or third day of your menstrual cycle after some pre treatment given in the previous cycle so the woman is taking injections on a daily basis that those depends upon her age her weight her uh, uh, you know uh, even the amount of egg that she has it is a amh level or anti follicular count so there are few factors which will determine what will be the dose of injection that you would receive so once you start on second day of your cycle then this goes on for nearly 8 to 10 days now in this 8 to 10 days period you are called for scan for understanding how many follicles you are growing so your ovary will be producing follicles if you are a very uh, good responder then you may grow around 7 8 follicles on both the ovaries suppose you are not a good responder you are a low responder then you will be growing few follicles and if you are a hyper responder then you are going to grow really really lot lot many number of follicles inside your ovaries so now to understand this how many follicles what is the size is it the appropriate response so you need to go through the scans so now the scans uh, will be around 2 or 3 or maximum 4 in that 10 to 12 days duration so this is to understand these uh, parameters and finally when the last day that is around day 10 day 11 day 12 of your cycle if the follicles are uh, you know reaching or they have reached the required size then you are given a trigger injection and then 34 35 hours later egg pick up is done now once the egg pick up is performed that is uh, you know it is done under anesthesia now this is something that is done to the vaginal root uh, uh, you know on the day of pick up and you are given anesthesia so that you don't experience any kind of pain and using the probe of the scan you have a channel there where you pass the needle and that probe is introduced in the vaginal cavity and then that is kind of targeted into the follicles this is something that is done in the ivf ot and whatever number of uh, follicles you would have developed on both of your ovaries those will be aspirated completely be it small medium big size follicle all follicles will get aspirated and that aspirated fluid will be given to the embryologist for detection of egg so again the number of eggs that you get here depends upon what is your response to the ovarian stimulation if you are someone who has got plenty say uh, 20 to 25 follicular response then you will get around 20 to 25 eggs also if you are uh, having the response of around 6 follicles on this side 7 follicles on uh, the other side put together around uh, you know 10 to 13 follicles then you may be getting around 10 to 12 eggs if you are someone who has got a very low response then you will get accordingly that is if uh, there is 7 to 8 follicles that have developed together in both the ovaries then you will get uh, something like 6 eggs 5 eggs uh, or you know or, or equal number of whatever is the number of follicle you will get equal number of eggs now out of these eggs will all be mature it is not generally the number of mature egg that we get is around uh, 80% 85% 
say suppose you have got 10 eggs then you will have around eight mature uh, eggs that you uh, will have the ones that are not mature will it be used the immature ones you cannot because immature egg will be containing double the number of chromosome that is 46 chromosomes whereas a mature egg will be containing 23 chromosomes so you can utilize only the mature eggs for doing the fertilization so this is very important this is one more thing that uh, uh, sometimes you know patients think that i got 20 eggs but uh, uh, you know they will they should be knowing that 20 eggs means not you know, all are mature. You may be having around 15 mature or 13 mature. It all depends. And any doctor's attempt will be to make you reach that stage of uh, getting good number of mature eggs. So it's it's sometimes very challenging to uh, you know, get that kind of a consumer stopper. Coming to the basics of egg and sperm health. Now, before I go into the detail, I, uh, I'll just tell you very briefly what happens. Now, in a, for a conception to happen, the, you know, when you are trying for pregnancy, the sperm is actually getting deposited in the, in the vaginal cavity. And then the sperm has to go up and then come here in both the tubes. And then the egg, which is uh, getting released around the mid-cycle, is picked up by the fallopian tube and then it is waiting here. So the fertilization happens here in the fallopian tube. It grows in the fallopian tube for four to five to six days and then it is dropped into the uterine cavity for implantation and that's how pregnancy happens. Now, for this to happen successfully, what, what is the most needed things? So now, first of all is egg and sperm both has to be of good quality. So when I say quality, what determines quality? It's the age of the couple. Uh, younger the couple, age couple, then better the quality. Older the age, then definitely the quality is going to decline. The number two aspect, what is most important is your overall health. Suppose you are taking your treatment at a later stage in your life, little uh, at a you know advanced age, then what matters is your overall physical health, isn't it? So if you are very healthy, you are uh, uh, your weight is in uh, check, both of you, husband and wife, you are uh, not having any associated medical uh, uh, diseases such as uh, obesity diabetes, hypertension, or any other problem, then definitely you are you know, at your best when it comes to fertility treatment success rate also. So the quality is something that is determined by age and also your overall lifestyle. So what happens, the egg and the sperm, you know, it is not that you uh, try and the egg is getting uh, released. For the egg or the sperm to reach its mature stage, it's a journey of around three months. So you would have noticed that your fertility doctor might tell you that before you begin the IVF treatment, the other corrections have to be done. That is really, really important for uh, IVF treatment to be successful and to acquire the desired outcome. So if you're having any other associated uh, medical illnesses, weight issues, or any other uh, uh, problems, emotional issues, if that is sorted, before the treatment that really matters because if you have taken that correction the egg or the sperm's growth the production that happens it's uh, around 8 to 10 to 12 weeks time that it uh, goes through before it reaches the mature stage so here it is very very important and extremely essential that before you begin the IVF treatment you need to have this uh, clarity or if you have been told about this clarity then you need to take action on this before embarking on the journey of IVF treatment. Now, taking correction uh, when it comes to weight, suppose you are very obese, whether it is wife or husband, losing weight will definitely impact the quality of the egg. If you have checked for thyroid, then what happens? You need to take the medication, correct that. Even if it takes one month, two months, do not jump for IVF treatment, get the correction done and then go for or the actual treatment. Sometimes I come across women having hypertension. So with hypertension, without control, do not start your IVF treatment. So taking care of that factor first, bringing the uh, blood pressure level down, normal, and then starting the treatment is more ideal. Because only once you reach that normal stage, then from there on, the quality of the egg or the sperm is also going to be much better 
when it uh, you know when you go through the stimulation and we uh, make these egg and the sperm fertilize it and make it into embryos so this is extremely uh, an important factor and this is not to be ignored at any cost because when it comes to ivf it's not only the amount of uh, you know time that you are spending you are also spending a lot of uh, money and to make it right and to make it successful you need to take control of these aspects also before beginning the ivf journey so now coming to the last part so that is the embryo transfer now embryo transfer again is a very very delicate procedure which is done in the ivf uh, ot and for this you need to have a half filled bladder and this procedure is done with the guidance of uh, ultrasound because um, when the doctor is doing this procedure he is doing this he or he is doing this under the guidance of the uh, ultrasound majorly because to understand uh, up to what stage i have to uh, introduce the catheter and then deposit the embryos now this is done without any anesthesia majority majority of the women takes uh, this procedure without any anesthesia sometimes if the woman is finding very difficult to cooperate that state and she needs an anesthesia then this can also be done under anesthesia but more than uh, you know 96 97% the procedure is done without anesthesia now here the best embryo is selected uh, it can be a one embryo or at the most two embryos that will be chosen and this is uh, on day 5 of the embryo growth that is blastocyst stage embryo that is selected so if i personally feel that if you have the best embryo you must take embryo transfer one by one to uh, actually completely eliminate the chance of twins because twins has its own uh, has its own challenges because uh, if twins are uh, you know uh, don't grow properly you land up with preterm delivery then that preterm delivery babies being in the nicu for a very long period of time is really very very disturbing distressing for the couple and also for the baby's health so if given a choice if you have got best embryos then definitely take transfer one at a time because uh, if one embryo has not resulted into a pregnancy then immediately in the next cycle you can take another transfer and the if you look at the cost then you are hardly spending anything uh, you know you're hardly spending for uh, that uh, another embryo transfer compared to the kind of uh, costing that you might land up with if the babies deliver preterm and then babies being in the nicu and its health long term uh, effects and all those things so because here you have complete control then take the embryo transfer one at a time uh, barring few situations where you have had multiple uh, single embryo transfer it has not resulted into pregnancy then you can go for double but even then i think you can choose to go one at a time to enhance your chances of single term and completely eliminate the chance of twins now when it comes to embryo transfer what happens is we do this uh, using the catheter like this and what goes the embryos are loaded into this inner catheter here at the tip the doctor is going to introduce this outer catheter first into the uterus just beyond the mouth of the uterus and the embryologists will get the embryos loaded in this catheter and then this will be deposited inside like this under the guidance and come very close to the uterus and just below its upper border uh, fundus we deposit the embryo here okay so that is done and then we take out this catheter that's it this is a procedure it looks very simple but yeah but it has to be done very delicately and uh, you know it has to be done very gently without giving much discomfort and pain to the patient so once this is done what happens inside is again i can't go into the uh, what shall i say the physiology of it what happens uh, uh, you know at a molecular level at a gene level so after the embryo day by embryo is kept inside the uterine cavity then there is a communication happening between the embryo that is deposited and the endometrium the lining that is formed is the endometrium so here there is a dialogue between the two that is happening if everything is in sync then implantation will get over in next 24 to 48 hours so after the implantation is over then 
for this to happen it's a very <clears throat> very dynamic structure and a very intricate uh, uh, you know mechanism that is happening inside and if everything is in right situation uh, the needed molecules are uh, in the right levels then implantation will be successful once the implantation is done uh, which happens in 24 to 48 hours then what happens is beta hcg is slowly going to get released and when do you do the blood test then because as i'm saying that the implantation is going to uh, get over in 24 to 48 hours you have to wait for the next at least 10 to 12 days a total of 12 to 14 days after the blastocyst transfer that you need to wait for in this waiting period of time you are given some medication minimum that you are receiving is something to insert into the vagina that is the progesterone you may be given some oral progesterone and other uh, vitamins for support this is uh, this is something that is given in the first cycle generally you will not need all injections injectable uh, you know other injections and too many medications are actually not needed only three to four different types of medications are given as the support in the waiting time of next 10 to 14 days so once you reach that stage of check then you are doing the test at the end of 12 days to 14 days after the embryo transfer that is the beta hcg blood test ideally it is always better to do the blood test because urine test will not tell you what is the level of beta hcg that your blood has so it's okay if you do that also but doing the beta hcg blood levels is extremely essential to understand what is the value and a value of around minimum 200 250 is good to say that that's a good level of beta hcg that you have okay if the levels are very low then definitely implantation has happened but most probably it is going to result into a biochemical pregnancy so thereafter i think your uh, doctor would tell you how often you have to have scans and uh, when to check for uh, sac uh, presence heartbeat uh, uh, presence and all those things so this was about the embryo transfer and what medications are given when you are waiting for uh, the result to uh, for the outcome to be known after 10 to 12 days so this was the extensive elaborate and a very simple explanation about uh, what is the science behind ivf i hope that you are getting clarity after seeing this after watching this 20 30 minutes of video so this was all about the science behind ivf which i told you in a very elaborate extensive manner but in a very simple way and i hope this gives you clarity when you uh, take the journey of ivf treatment and uh, you your doubts are cleared with this video and if you have uh, you know really liked this then definitely share with someone who may need this information who may need this clarity and you can subscribe for more such information uh, on the youtube so signing off dr indu